I was born uh, up in the north of Poland in a small town called now listen to this <laughs> Świno Ujście. Can you repeat that after me? Świno Ujście. Well, I know it's uh, it's not easy to repeat that. Polish but hey, some people heaven. say some people say that Polish is the language of heaven. You know why? Because it takes eternity to learn it. So don't worry if you can't repeat the, the town that I come from. It's called Świnoujście. It's a beautiful city uh, by the seaside in the north, uh, northern western edge of our country, on a border with Germany, just by the Baltic Sea. My father was a seaman, so he was six months at the sea, two months at home. Six months at the sea, two months at home. Um, so as you can imagine, I did not have a, much of a relationship with my father. He was, uh, he was like a uh, superstar, you know, that would appear from time to time and, uh, and then go. Uh, so my mom was the one that was raising me and uh, she provided a sort of a safety for me when I was a child. Um, but suddenly when I was 10 years old, my mom uh, got ill and it was a uh, very difficult time. I, I just could not understand it. Uh, I actually didn't know how serious that was. She was taken to a hospital after a while and uh, never came out from the hospital. Uh, the last time I saw her was at the funeral and uh, she did not look at all like my mom that I remembered. So it was, it was a very hard experience as a 10 year old boy and my mom always taught me to pray to God and I was praying to God when uh, my mom was in hospital and nothing happened so I thought that as a young boy you know, that God just doesn't care about me uh, so as I grew up with uh, that kind of uh, experience you know I, I thought okay if God is not there, I will just try to go or find my own way. And, you know, as a young teenager, I tried different things. My father was still a seaman, you know. Uh, I had someone who looked after me. Uh, so I got into drinking alcohol, doing all kinds of silly things that young people do. And, uh, Whenever I woke up, you know, after a party like this, I would still feel that emptiness in my heart. And uh, it wasn't until my, my older brother, who is 11 years older, was in the army. And, uh, and he became a Christian. He uh, experienced what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And that was something that uh, he started sharing with me. At first, I was laughing at him. You know, I thought this is crazy. You know, what are you talking about? And uh, he took me to a, a Baptist church in our hometown uh, and to a youth group meeting. And I thought it was crazy. These people were talking to God in their own words, and and it seemed so real so authentic, like they knew God. And I just could not believe that it's possible to have a relationship with God like that. But step by step, you know, I started learning more and more about God. And they gave me a New Testament to read. And I started to read it. And for all these years, I blamed God for taking away my mom from me. Uh, but as I started reading the scripture, studying the scripture, I realized that uh, actually, you know, I blame God for it, but uh, God sent His only Son for me. And He paid the price for me. And it was so powerful that in my life that, you know, it was a process. I was, you know, 
slowly committing my life to God. When, I, when suddenly this realization came, wow, I am a child of God now. Wow, all my sins are forgiven. Wow, I have a new life in Christ. And it was so powerful that uh, from the beginning, since I became a Christian, you know, I sensed a calling to share this with others. And very soon I became a youth leader in my church. I was involved in uh, a Christian student movement, started preaching at the camps, got involved with students, did the prayer group in my high school. And uh, I remember when I preached my first sermon, it was on, uh, <laughs> it was on uh, God's love. It was my first sermon. Uh, and it was on passion for God. And then, <clears throat> I, I felt when I was graduating, I had a choice to make. Either go to a low school or to the seminary. It's just two ways, you know. And, uh, and I prayed about it. And uh, it was quite an amazing experience because we had a visiting missionaries from a, you know, I've never met these people before in my life. I was at the worship service sitting somewhere at the back and right after that service a leader of that group wanted to speak to me I was really surprised because I didn't know him I didn't say anything and uh, I, at that time I didn't speak English yet and I had someone to translate his message and he said and this man said you know God has a calling on your life and it's a calling to minister to others. It's a calling that uh, you will preach the Word of God, not only in Poland, but in different nations. You just got to prepare for that. That was like, wow. <laughs> it came at the time when I was thinking what to do. And it was one of the confirmations that was very clear that God is calling me to the ministry. So I went to the seminary, I went through the seminary serving as a youth pastor, got involved in many different projects. When I was a youth pastor, we started a project called uh, uh, Operation Group Revival. We did camps, we did uh, conferences, and we did like, it was like a little, like a small version of passion movement, you know, for, uh, uh, for Poland. And we were very excited about that. Then God called me to do something I was really surprised at. I never thought of myself, you know, that I can do, I can be good at academic studies, but uh, God uh, provided me a scholarship at the University of Wales in Cardiff to do Masters of Theology, uh, which I passed, uh, you know, um, very well, and, uh, and they offered me uh, to stay and to do a PhD there which was a bigger of a surprise for me. It's like, wow, that's amazing, God. I don't know what you have in mind, you know, but uh, if this is the way, I, I'm certainly prepared to do this. So I did my PhD in uh, missions, theology of mission. And uh, in the last year of my PhD, I met Agnieszka, uh, or I met her, yes, I met her last year and we married and Agnieszka, moved in uh, to, to, to be with me in Wales for one year. We lived there together. And then we were thinking what to do after six years of living in the UK. I could stay there. You know, it was easy for me to stay there, get a job there and uh, well paid, have a, have a nice, comfortable future, so to say, from a material perspective. But we clearly prayed and sensed that God is calling us back here to Poland and we came back and we ministered and uh, started ministry in a second Baptist church here in Wrocław uh, which is in the place called the Triangle from the Bermuda Triangle where people used to go in and never come out and we started many different ministries there and, uh, but over the years God has been drilling our heart, my heart with uh, this vision for, for leaders, for national 
international work. And uh, that's how God's been working step by step, you know, that we are now working as uh, pastors to pastors doing, you know, sort of international ministry. And we are very excited about His continual growth of His calling in me and in my wife and in our son David, which we are very excited about.